Hey guys, so I just finished reading Verity by Colleen Hoover. I read it in 24 hours. This video is going to be no cuts, no breaks. These are my initial thoughts after finish reading the book. So spoilers, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler ahead because I'm just going to be saying the first things that came to my mind after finishing this book. I haven't talked to anybody about it. I haven't seen any videos yet because I didn't want it to influence my initial reactions. So I'm just going to get started. Like I said, this is just going to be a straight through of my opinions on the book and what I thought about it after reading it in 24 hours. So honestly, all I can say is Verity, 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 Verity. <laughs> Literally, this book had me on the edge of my seat. Like I said, this is a spoiler. This is a spoiler alert. I will be spoiling the book, so I gave you ample amount of time now to click out of the video and come back when you're finished. And I'm just gonna get started. So all I'm gonna say is I can I can solidly give this book a three and a half. And the only reason why I'm gonna give it a three and a half is because I kind of didn't like the ending. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So basically, this novel follows, um, I guess you could say it's three main characters. It's Lowen, Lowen Ashley. She's a writer. She writes suspense thrillers. And she is just coming off of the loss of her mother who died. Um, yeah, so she's just coming off the loss of her mother. So the book opens up crazy. It opens up with Lowen witnessing... A man getting ran over on a New York street and that's when she meets Jeremy who asks her is she okay because she just went through this traumatic event and they end up going to a coffee shop to help her clean off the blood after she was standing so close to the guy who got ran over and they just like have a little bit of small talk he's basically asking her is she okay and she's like yeah I'll be fine and he's like okay I have to get to a meeting it was nice meeting you it was a little bit of flirting going on and I'm like that's a little weird you just witnessed something super traumatic and it's like oh yeah I'm good I'm good like that was a little strange to me and then he ends up giving her his shirt and then he leaves he says he has a meeting to get to and she also has a meeting to get to so she like washes herself off with the blood off the washes the blood off of her and then proceeds to head to her meeting so lo and behold they're ended up at the same meeting and his name is jeremy crawford and he's interviewing her which he didn't know well we'll get to that in a second but he's interviewing her to see if she will be able to ghost write the remaining the remaining three books in a series that his wife created because she can't finish the books because she's injured after she got into a car accident so at first Lowen didn't want to do it but I'm like girl they were they were offering you like 250k and you're about to get evicted from your apartment and you're saying you don't want to do it girl if you don't do it but anyways he convinces her saying that they're lowballing her ask for more money and ask not to do a press tour and you'll and she'll um get more money that way and she won't have to be in the spotlight so after some convincing she agrees and then she also agrees to go to their house and stay at their house while she goes through the wife's office verity the wife's name is verity goes through verity's office that was a little strange to me i'm like you couldn't have paid me to just stay at the stranger's house like granted he helped you out while you just went through something traumatic but that was weird to me that was already like red flag red flag number one so she takes the trip to vermont all the way from new york to go to their house and when she gets there she already sees that something is off so by this point in the book i already kind of knew where the book was heading which also goes into my three and a half star rating because i could already see at this point where the book was going but i was like still intrigued hence also why it gets three and a half stars for me because it still kept me hooked even though i could kind of see where it was going and when she okay so back to the story so when she gets to the house she meets the son crew 
he literally just pops up in front of her driver door and then when she gets out and is like hi um where's your dad basically he leads her to the house and then just closes the door in her face first of all i was crying when i read that i'm like no way that he just closed the door in her face but i already knew something was off with him too from then because it's like bro what like what is even happening so i'm gonna skip a little bit i'm not gonna give like full like in depth to the story i'm just gonna cut to the chase like i'm giving you a quick synopsis of the story and then i'm gonna cut to the chase on my likes and dislikes and where 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 do we go from here basically so to make a, a long story short she ends up coming to the house then like she sees jeremy again they have a little small talk she sees verity she sees that um she learns about her condition or whatever and then she's in her office and she starts doing the background work like doing what she got paid to do to start like researching to write the last three books or whatever however she comes across a manuscript and the manuscript that she comes across is an autobiography of Verity's life so that's like whoa because that's not what she came here for that's not what she signed up here for but you know curious just like anybody else would do she wanted to see like what the manuscript was about so she um started reading the manuscript and that's when things take a drastic turn and we find out that verity isn't who she's portrayed to be so in the manuscript like i said it's an autobiography of verity writing about how she met jeremy and that again was another red flag and side note and it's just like jeremy is sus like nobody can tell me that jeremy is not also crazy like it's a hundred percent after we start reading the manuscript that we find out that verity is crazy and me personally since the first page in the book i already knew that lowen was crazy but jeremy is also crazy like nobody can convince me that jeremy is not crazy and he doesn't have his own set of issues anyway so you read the manuscript you find out how they met he basically lied and said that it was his limo um no i'm getting ahead of myself he basically sees her drinking is like oh she's not gonna have any more drinks she'll have water i don't let's not do that but basically he was saying that because he wanted her to be coherent when he invited her back to his house and then he lies and says that it's his limo and it's not really his limo he just opened the door to the first limo and they started like making out or whatever and then the limo owner came back and that again why why are we lying unprovoked what are we lying for that was also strange to me but then basically it just she just details this whirlwind relationship that she had with jeremy and how she was basically obsessed with him q mariah carey singing obsessed with me but she was obsessed with him and basically like the first three days they didn't leave his apartment and she was just so into him and so in love with him and i was just like okay i mean it's so soon but i guess when you know you know i guess so basically after that um they're living the the honeymoon stage everything's great everything's fine everything's dandy and then she finds out she's pregnant cue the mic drop when she finds out she's pregnant she realizes that everything vastly changed like i said she's super obsessed with jeremy and as they're talking after finding out that she's pregnant he's basically saying that he's like in love with the twins like more he loves the twins more than he loves her <laughs> i don't know who told jeremy to say that because verity goes from this sweetheart even though i knew she was she was not a sweetheart but she went from this like sweetheart nice person to evil just straight evil like this girl tried to unalive her children while they were still in her stomach with a hanger yes you heard me correctly i said a hanger because jeremy said he loves the twins more than her 
okay there was a slight cut but that's because my camera said i was recording too much at one time but anyways that's when things took a turn she tried to unalive her kids with a hanger then after that she was in the after she gave birth she realized that um jeremy was more in love with the kids than her and from then that's when it went downhill she tried to basically unalive her her twin daughter harper because she got a dream a premonition if you will that Har harper um tried to unalive chastin when well it didn't even really say age she just she seen a dream after that and after that dream she just was not messing with harper at all and she, it would just became all about chastin 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 and obviously jeremy picked up on this and side note when she tried to unalive harper by like make make her choke on her own vomit you cannot tell me that jeremy did not see it on the baby monitor because she had unplugged the baby monitor before she had went in the room to check on Chastin and she went to check on Chastin because that's when she actually started to develop a connection with Chastin after that dream that she had. But you can't tell me that Jeremy didn't plug back in the monitor and watch her try to unalive Harper. Because after that, it's like he became more like, even though he was in love with the kids already, he became like more devoted to them. And I feel like because he's seen it. And that's why I think that Jeremy is a, a different breed of crazy as well at the fact that he didn't even leave her. Cause I know he's, I know he's seen, I know he's seen on the baby monitor, monitor, which is why I think he's a different type of crazy that he didn't just take his kids and leave. And then, okay, so here's what I'll do. I'll go fully through the manuscript and then we'll go back outside of the manuscript. So then we can have some type of cohesive cohesive thing going on right now because right now this thing is all over the place and i promise it's going to make sense at the end so after that she just starts doing crazy stuff to the twins especially to harper and fast forward to when they're about three and they're in their new house or whatever and she cooks jeremy this dinner and it's supposed to be a romantic night and she's telling and first of all she put them in daycare without telling jeremy and he flips out as he should and it's like you're seeing all the signs that this woman is crazy and you're just ignoring it and it's clearly not for love because we'll get to that in a second so it's this nice romantic dinner or whatever and then she's talking about chastin 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 like they're not twins and Harper is like not there at all and he finally calls her out on it and gets upset and she's being the master the master manipulator that she is and basically flips it on him and it's like oh they're they need different types of parenting from me and it's not what you think it is because he's basically like you're acting like it's only just Chastin and it's Chastin and Harper and then she's like oh no yeah and basically again neglecting harper the daycare attendant told her like weeks prior to test harper for asperger's and she completely forgot about it but in this moment using everything in her toolbox to manipulate jeremy she tells him like oh we should get she said that the teacher told her to get um harper tested and said that we'll get her tested and then proceeds to say oh yeah and then we'll we will have three kids and then he's like you're pregnant you're pregnant whole time this girl is not pregnant now she's on a ploy to get herself pregnant before jeremy realizes that she isn't pregnant this lady is crazy like i don't i don't understand how he was missing all these red flags i don't get it so then she ends up becoming pregnant with crew which is the little boy i was talking about before so then now they have three kids and if she thought that she was getting Jeremy's love and affection before, now it's completely depleted now that they have three kids and she's just like so upset at the fact that all this is happening. Then, oh, I forgot to mention a key detail that Harper, excuse me, Chastin has a severe allergy to peanuts. So then when the girls are at a sleepover, um, when they're at a sleepover, they get a call that Chastin 
is Chastin dead. Chastin is dead. And then it comes to find out that the girls had an unsupervised snack in the middle of the night and they didn't realize that what they were eating contained peanuts. So then in the morning, they put two and two together and realized that she had something with peanuts in it. And obviously they're little kids. So nobody knew that she would have such a severe reaction and try to administer an EpiPen or anything like that. So boom, one kid down. So now it's two of them left. Now it's Harper and crew. But Verity has it in her mind that Harper caused Chastin to die based on the premonition that she had from way back when when they were six months old so now she has this like vendetta against her own kid again this woman is insane she's literally insane so after that one day um Jeremy tells Verity to take the kids out to the lake to enjoy themselves. It's been six months um, She hasn't written anything for her book and To just to have a just have a nice day out. So she takes the she takes the kids out By the lake and crew is sitting on the dock putting his foot in the canoe and it's like girl watch your kids What are, what are we doing right now? and that's when the idea pops into her head to take them out onto the lake flip the canoe over and let harper drown and said that basically they'll be a perfect family with just crew her and jeremy and it'll be fine no no it won't be fine so she goes through with her plan and right before she tips over the canoe she tells crew to hold his breath and that is where she messed up i mean she was she was messing up like for even having that thought anyway but she almost could have got away with it if she didn't tell crew to hold his breath she tells crew to hold his breath she flips over the canoe she literally watches and allows her own daughter to drown and swims to the shore with crew and then she has to think fast and is like oh they're gonna be expecting her to be hyperventilating and calling out to her and looking in the water for harper so then she goes back in the water and pretends to try to find her daughter pretends to try to find her daughter and um obviously harper dies as well six months after her twin and Jeremy is devastated and heartbroken because not only that he's the one who ends up pulling her out the lake and obviously afterwards everybody is questioning Verity like why didn't they have on life jackets why were you guys so far out and she's coming up with excuse after excuse after excuse until one night she's laying in the bed with Jeremy and crew hold on okay my camera doesn't want me to be great so where i last left off was as they are laying in the bed with crew jeremy and verity she asked um jeremy to hold her um still playing the sad grieving mother even though she just murdered her daughter and jeremy is asking her another set of questions again about why they had on no life vest why they were out so far and again, she's feeding him lies, lies, lies. And then he's like, so why did you tell crew to hold his breath? Boom, boom. This is the exact moment that I knew that Jeremy is a different breed of crazy as well. Because even if in that moment that you knew what she did to your daughter, after, six months after you lost your other daughter and you still stayed, it's crazy to me i'm sorry it's just, it's just a little bit of crazy that i just don't want to ever meet in life so that's when i knew about jeremy so basically i'm definitely skipping over some parts because i feel like this video is super long but i just want to i just want to get to the nitty gritty which is the ending so the manuscript moreover just ends with her saying that she's not sure how 
Jeremy is going to deal with the truth, whether he's going to go to the police or end her life. So it's better if she just crashes her car into a tree. So and then it ends with the end. So that aligns with what happened in real life because like we said she can't finish her last three novels because she got into a car accident and it's supposed that she ran her car into a tree also side note when Lowen asked Jeremy she said that he said that she, he was just extremely upset with Verity so keep that in mind Okay, I'm trying to finish this review, but not only did my camera shut off, now it's dead. So I'm just going to record from my phone and finish what I was saying. So, oh my gosh, where did I last leave off? I believe the last thing I said was um, Jeremy is a different kind of crazy because at this point you know that um, she at least killed one of your children and you're still going to save with her. And so it goes back, it correlates back to what happened in real life that she um, got into a car wreck, which is the whole reason that Lowen is there in the first place. So she finishes reading the manuscript and she's still grappling with the idea of whether or not to tell Jeremy about this manuscript and about this evil person Verity is. Whole time as she's meeting this, as she's reading this manuscript, she realizes that Verity is able to walk and she might be faking her injuries because she was outside um watching crew and Jeremy like destroy the deck or whatever and crew waves and she's thinking that crew is waving to her whole time she looks up to Verity's room and the window is open and the curtain is pulled back as if she was standing there waving to crew. At this point, I would have had to return the money and hightailed it back to New York. First flight, first drive, I would have been out of there. As soon as you're telling me this person who's supposed to be in a paralyzed state, all these unexplained things are happening. She's literally having encounters with Jeremy on the couch and she looks up. And at the top of the stairs, Verity is standing there looking at them with her hands clenched. And you're telling me you're still going to stay in this house? Lowen is also crazy. At this point, I've come to the realization that all these characters in this book are insane. Little crew included. Because he literally bites a butter knife and has to get stitches just from avoiding the fact that Lowen asked him, is his mother speaking to him? And instead of answering, he bites a knife and has to get stitches. And again, why I say Jeremy is crazy, you let the strange woman into your house who has episodes of sleepwalking and your son is injured twice in her presence and you don't think maybe she could be the one doing these things to your son it doesn't even cross his mind at all which is mind-boggling to me and just absurd and i just don't understand how he could be like cool with that in itself which also makes me believe that jeremy is obsessed with lowen just like verity is obsessed with him because he also once she tells him that she has episodes of sleepwalking she he puts a lock on both her door and Verity's door to make her feel more comfortable, which is crazy. And also, when they both got locked in the master bedroom, because the lock is on the outside of the door, again, she's telling him that Verity's able to walk, and he still is like, no, she can't walk, she can't walk. Like, that's crazy. That's really crazy, actually. Like, I'm still, I'm still in shock. So after all of that, after all these different signs that Verity isn't as sick as she's claiming to be or as everybody thinks she is, Lowen has had enough. She's fed up. She's like trying to make Verity 
like show that she's able to walk and it's just not it's just not working and side note Verity's nurse she had to have known that something was going on with Jeremy and Lowen she had to have known because she was just acting like so oblivious just like I feel like she potentially could have known that Verity wasn't being completely truthful about her injuries because there's no way that you can fake being sick for that long and be a sane person let's be real let's be real anyways I feel like I'm talking in circles at this point so I'm just gonna cut to the chase to what I really want to discuss which is the end which comes up with the manuscript versus the letter and which one is the truth because at the end of at the end of the book basically Loan finally decides to show Jeremy the manuscript and he's like enraged obviously and they go to Verity's room and he's like Verity if you're faking this tell me right now she's just regular nonchalant then he's like if you're faking this you better say something right now because if I walk out of this room I'm calling the police and you'll never see me or crew again and then that's when she's like well I can explain but <laughs> <laughs> just surprise I'm all better now like that was that was like that's not funny but I was really laughing super hard when out of nowhere she just like snaps out of it it's like well I can explain and after that Jeremy proceeds to choke her out <laughs> like that's not funny but he proceeds to choke her out but what I'm laughing at is the fact that Lowen just already had it in the back of her mind like no they're gonna suspect you you have to unalive her like she tried to unalive Harper when she was six months old like you just had that at the back of your head like Lowen is crazy too like I'm really convinced that the reason why they kept emphasizing that the series Verity created she wrote from the villain's point of view in all her books and I'm convinced that Colleen Hoover kept emphasizing that to show that you can be the villain in someone else's story thinking that you're the same if that makes sense and what I mean by that is for instance Verity became the villain in Lowen's story without even realizing it by her reading the manuscript because she villainized this woman based on what she read and in the letter that Verity wrote to Jeremy she basically said that she made all that up as a creative writing process so she could finish her books and it was a suggestion from her editor or something like that or her maybe her agent I can't really remember but she basically claims she made up the whole manuscript and none of it is true me personally I'm team manuscript and I just don't think you can come up with that type of evil especially especially the acts against the children if it wasn't true which is why I believe that the manuscript is true and the letter was her version of covering up the tracks in case Jeremy did go to the police with the manuscript if he ever found if he ever found it so this book just has me all over the place actually like honest and truly this might have been the messiest review that I've ever done because it's literally how I felt while reading this book like this book was literally all over the place in some parts where I thought the story was gonna go and the way that I expected it didn't go that way because honestly and truly I kind of see how they builded the relationship with Lowen and Jeremy but not build it enough for them to get together and have a kid and just live in a whole different state and basically just act like 
Verity didn't exist. Honestly, I would have rated the book higher if Jeremy was like in on it or if Loen and Verity were actually able to have a connection and figure out that it was Jeremy who was like the crazy person and Verity was trying to get away from him and it was him who did the stuff to the kids. Maybe I think I would have enjoyed it more because I think that would have been a twist that I wouldn't have seen coming for real. Because yeah, at the end of the book, it just left me deciding whether which truth was true. Back to my statement about being the villain in somebody else's story. Just like the twins and the kids were the villain in Verity's story and she just wanted to be this loving wife who was obsessed with her husband and then these kids came along and just ruined it for her. So they were her villain. Verity was Lowen's villain. And Jeremy is just somewhere in between just floating. I don't really know. So I guess that poses the big question on the manuscript versus the letter. And me personally, I believe the manuscript because I just don't see somebody writing the things that she wrote for it to just be for creative writing. And that's very ironic seeing that this is a book that we're talking about. So somebody did write those things, but I don't know. And especially if she did write that the way she wrote it, you would think she would have gave Jeremy the heads up if it was all a lie. And then also how low and creative, just, she just forgot that she read that Jeremy knew about the manuscript beforehand. And then it was like Corey was mentioned at the beginning of the book. And then at the end of the book, it's like nothing. I don't know, guys. This was this was a doozy. Um, this is my third Colleen Hoover book. I've read Ugly Love, It Ends With Us, and Verity. And honestly, in the order that I enjoyed the books would have to be It Ends With Us, Verity, Ugly Love. Um, let me know if you guys want to see another review. This this was all over the place. Uh, this is literally my thoughts reading this book in 24 hours. Let me know if you want to see another one. Because I just... I really wish I would have did this much more neat. Yeah, maybe eventually I'll come back and do an updated review on this book when I've gathered my thoughts completely. But at least you know that this was a genuine, honest reaction because it is all over the place and so much took place. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Nonetheless, let me know what you want to see next. Um, I am branching out more and doing more books and movies and TV show reviews. I'm